Hello everyone, this is Nalima Nimje uh, from EMS department and today we are going to take a subject called as production and total quality management. In that we are going to look after the concept called as economic order quantity. So let us start with the meaning of economic order quantity. So economic order quantity means the quantity that you are going to purchase. Simply it means the quantity that you are going to purchase. But whatever quantity you are going to purchase, it should be economical, it should be feasible, it should be optimal enough at, uh, that you are purchasing that quantity at a complete lowest cost. So here economic order quantity refers to the quantity order to be purchased at the lowest total cost. Now here what do you mean by the total cost? Total cost is a submerge of purchase cost, ordering cost and carrying cost. Now one by one we will be looking after this. This all, th all three together forms the total cost. So if you are, whenever you are ordering uh, a certain quantity, that quantity should be ordered at completely minimum. The carrying cost and the ordering cost should be minimum over here. So economic order quantity is a formula used to determine the optimal number of units to order to minimize the carrying cost and the ordering cost. So EOQ is also known as economic uh, lot size. So now let us see one by one what do this purchase cost mean, ordering cost and the carrying cost mean. So very first let us start with the purchase cost. So purchase cost is something which is very very fixed. It is not at all changed. So let us take it for an example. For example I have a company and in my company I need to manufacture a chair. And in order to make that chair I require wood. So for example in a year, in a year when I am saying in a year so it means I, uh, the, in a year I am requiring thousand woods okay thousand woods i am requiring now this thousand woods uh, would be called as either annual demand or annual consumption so thousand wood and the per unit value of that uh, wood is 10 rupees like one wood is for 10 rupees so 10 into thousand is giving me 10000 so my purchase cost is fixed for the raw material moving towards next is ordering cost now ordering cost is the value or we could say it is the costing which has been uh, associated when you purchase the order okay whenever then order has been purchased at that time whatever costs or expenses are associated with it that is what called as ordering cost so very first is transportation cost transportation cost is something like if i per placed an order so the raw material i need to per take it from the suppliers and bring it at my place for my industry so the transportation expense would be my order would be coming under the ordering cost Second is documentation. Now I need to prepare the uh, transportation papers. I need to have certain uh, check on the documents. All the documentation would also come. The expenses related to the documentation would also be coming under an ordering cost. Third is all this document needs to have proper print. It should be having a proper filing. So the printing and stationary cost would also be inculcated into this ordering cost. And last is I need to make an purchase out of it. Like I need to... Uh, uh, have a proper inspection, a quality check for my uh, product, that whether my quality is up to the mark or not. So that inspection charges will be also uh, coming under an ordering cost. So the cost which is completely associated while purchasing certain products, example is transportation, documentation, printing and stationery and inspection, all this cost together forms an ordering cost. Moving towards the next is carrying cost. Now once I place the order, after that, I need to hold that order somewhere like for example I have ordered 10,000 wood. I need to keep somewhere that 10,000 wood. So now where I would be keeping? I would be keeping it in the warehouse. Warehouse is nothing but in Goda. Okay where my goods would be sold. So now in order I am uh, as I am uh, like storing my goods over here, my raw materials over here. So for this particular thing I need to pay the rent. So this rent would be coming under the carrying cost. And when I talk about the goods that I have kept in the warehouse, they, they can meet with any kind of uncertainty we could be saying. So uncertainty like they, the goods can catch fire, it can get damaged. So for that reason, I need to uh, have a proper insurance of that particular good. So that, would, that uh, insurance would be also coming under the carrying cost. So this carrying cost is associated with the cost. Once that good has came at my place, after that whatever expenses that has been uh, incurred over here, that is my carrying cost. So very clear with the concept of uh, purchase cost, ordering cost and carrying cost. Now moving towards the real world examples of EOQ. So very first example is retail. 
as we all know in retail outlet you can have you must have seen lot of perishable goods perishable goods are nothing but the dairy products fruits and vegetables or these are perishable goods now when these have certain uh, like uh, life span so when to order this good for that reason the retailer use this eoq so a gro grocery store uses the eoq to manage the inventory of its perishable goods making sure products do not expire before they are been sold okay second example is manufacturing like in uh, the manufacturing plant my goods should be continuously manufactured and for the continuous manufacturing process i require the raw materials and when to have that raw materials stocked up in my manufacturing plant for that reason the eoq has been used so it is for the production process minimizing its cost and ensuring the smooth operation moving towards the third example that is healthcare so in the hospital usually the medicines are been stocked up so when to buy that medicine for that reason also the eoq uh, is been used for stocking up that medicine so these are the three real world examples of uh, eoq now moving towards the eoq graphical representation so rather than directly explaining this let us see one by one that how this uh, graph actually has been formed so let's take an example in my manufacturing plant i require 10000 units okay so what did uh, what did uh, in very uh, i've taken i've uh, taken three examples over here first example is like that i have divided this 10000 unit four times okay so it's just like 10000 and i have divided into four times like 2500 2500 2500 2500 and 2500 it means every quarterly it means every 3 months i am going to place an order of this 2500 quantity so i have uh, place an order quarterly that is four times in a year and my cost per order one order i am placing for that i require 1000 rupees so as i am placing four orders so four into 1000 it's completely 4000 moving towards now here the carrying cost has been low down how it has been low down 2500 units i have purchased now as i purchased 2500 units so my warehouse is been small my uh, rent uh, related to that warehouse would be small the insurance that i would be making uh, for that 2500 units that is also less okay so my carrying cost is low down second example is 5000 like in a year annually i have placed order only two times half yearly only two times so 5000 5000 so two orders i have placed so 2000 in 2000 is 2000 okay so ordering cost is again low down my carrying cost has been increased now how come it has increased 5000 units are there now my warehouse i require a huge warehouse for that where i could stock up 5000 units so my costing rent of that warehouse would increase the insurance amount would also increase as the quantity have increased moving towards the third example that is 10000 unit i have ordered 10000 unit only once a year okay so when i am talking once a year so only one order has been placed and for that one order my ordering cost is Thousand rupees. So here again, my warehouse re required is very large. So my warehouse rent has been increased. My uh, insurance uh, that uh, insurance amount for that ten thousand unit at one single time. So my insurance amount have also increased. So here you can see with this example, as soon as my ordering quantity is increasing, my ordering cost is lowing down. It is decreasing. Okay, and my carrying cost is increasing increasing simultaneously. So now let us reflect this numbers in the graph. So here you can see cost is there and quantity. Like uh, 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 here there is a quantity, here it is in cost. So now what it is happening? What we said as soon as the quantity increases, my ordering cost is low down. So that's the reason the graph of ordering cost have low down. It is coming uh, uh, towards down. Okay. and what it it has been said as soon as the quantity has been increased my carrying cost increases and that's the reason this holding cost is nothing but than carrying cost holding cost ka my graph is getting increased towards upwards okay now here you can see a common inter uh, intersection now this intersection is the point where my ordering cost and where my carrying cost is completely minimum so here this quantity is something where i can uh, place an order and at that time my ordering cost and holding cost would be completely minimum so this is a perfect where time to, to this or we could say this is a perfect quantity that where we could place an order okay so moving towards the next uh, assumptions of eoq model so very first assumption is like 
annual carrying cost per unit and the cost per order can be accurately estimated so uh, it is been said that the carrying cost like uh, warehouse ka rent uh, and insurance it is fixed it is constant which cannot but in reality it is not happening such like uh, such things are not happening so that is an assumption very first assumption second assumption is like whatever demand has been raised by the consumer that demand is completely constant so it is rarely possible you you must you can you can uh, also relate that it is rarely possible that the consumer demand cannot be constant throughout the time okay third is my average inventory so this is a formula to carry an average inventory that is q divided by 2 where q stands for order quantity what does this assumption means though i am having 1000 units in my uh, warehouse but only 500 units can be uh, is available for me okay next is no discount on large order we know when you are per, uh, making an uh, eoq so you are ordering it in a bulk and it is uh, in many of the cases when you are ordering in bulk the discounts have been granted but here the assumptions have been made that no discounts have been given on large order next is lead time is known lead time is known means what the time that i have placed an order and the time that i am going to receive that order the time in between this uh, two points is called as lead time it means they are saying that uh, the order that i have placed right now i know that i am going to get order within 15 days it is completely fixed it is completely constant over there 15 days ka it cannot happen 18 days it cannot happen 12 days it's only 15 days that what the assumptions are and last assumption is inventory has one stock point it means the only uh, there is one storage location for the entire inventory so this is one of the last assumption so that's all about the basics of eoq in next lecture we are going to uh, look after the formulas and the numericals related to the eoq thank you all